Hey everybody, it's Wednesday, and you know what that means. It is another episode of Snipes and Stripes right here on NoFilter.net. I got the wine tonight, not my whiskey in the wild. Go to whiskeyinthewild.com, get your chocolate and chocolate whiskey. That is my whiskey, just so you know, so make sure you reach out. Grab a bottle. It is the holiday season, Tim. It's one of the best gifts you can have. It is, um, it's probably going to be one of the best drinking experiences you've ever had. But tonight I got wine, and we also have another one of our great sponsors tonight for... Snipes and Stripes, you know who it is. It's one of your favorites, too, because you're the betting man. Bet online, Tim. So welcome to the show. Welcome to the week. Welcome to everything, partner. What's going on? Give us a little bet online and tell us what's happening with you this week. Well, I've been on fire this week, pal, on, on my game so far. But we're going to give a shout out to Bet Online. Thank you very much. Tremendous sponsor. The holiday season is off and rolling with NFL in full stride. And the NBA and NHL hitting midseason form. Bet Online is your number one destination for all sports wagering info with up to the minute sports wage- wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions. Bet Online is the top spot for everything pro and amateur sports. And not just the big four, Bet Online has info avail- available at your fingertip with both, both desktop and mobile access at any time for almost any sport that is played from MMA to international soccer, head to Bet Online today. And remember to use our promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% discount welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts, buddy. And thank you, Bet Online. We love you guys. Yeah, it must have been real crazy watching the Bet Online lines go like crazy after that that's Kansas City game with that offsides. It must have been going crazy. People like, oh, oh my God, we won this game. And then, <laughs> right? You know, it's we, we can chat about this real quick before we bring on uh, probably one of the one of the most exciting guests that we've had so far. Uh, this year, and I think a guy that everybody's going to love to hear about, Evander Kane. We're very proud to be able to talk to him tonight, especially in the middle of the season. For him to take the time to come up with up, come on with us is going to be a lot of fun. Listening to Evander and what's going on up there in Edmonton, but just talking about that game. Just let's talk football, just for a quick second, just for a quick second, because it's not too often that you see late in the game, last two minutes, a team that is one of the best in the league is getting ready to go down. They score one of the most unbelievable touchdowns of all time Kelsey with the you know with the with the uh the, the lateral and touchdown and the guy standing off sides <laughs> like, like listen how dumb do you have to be as a player to to obey the first rule that you learn in football is to line up on sides first rule it's unbelievable it's unbelievable I, I I can't you can't even make this stuff up but I got to be honest, I kind of enjoyed it because I love seeing Patrick Mahomes meltdown afterwards. And I thought he acted like a whiny little baby when he was hugging. I think, he lost, I, I think he lost a lot of fans and a lot of respect by doing that, don't you think? When he was hugging Josh Allen and said, that's the worst call in, in the history of the NFL, give me a break, dude. You know what? I've watched a lot of uh, Kansas City Chiefs uh, games. You know, they're close to, to in proximity to me in St. Louis. Trust me. Patty Mahomes, you got a lot of breaks this year from the officiating. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and for him, for, you know, so it, it bothered me. I, I kind of enjoyed it. I got a giggle out of it. You know, I thought I thought it was um, it was pretty crazy to see all the all the media and some of the announcers talk about that play. They're like, listen, yeah, it didn't have anything to do with the play, but it is a rule. <laughs> What are, you, what are you supposed to throw away the rule because it was a great play? I mean, that made Patrick look like so dumb. But I, listen, this is the this is the fault of the guy who didn't look next to him, didn't look where the scrimmage line was, and stood right there in one of the biggest moments of the game. I mean, come on, you know, wake who, up. You know who really wasn't happy with the call? Swifty. Old Taylor Swift. She <laughs> yeah, she's going to lose some airtime with that with that with that play, right? She's not going to get on, on camera. Oh, well, man. listen, we're we're going to re- we're going to put we're going to reach out to uh, to our guy Vander Kane. We're going to bring him on the show. We're very excited to have him. I can't wait to hear what he has to say about the season, about himself, about Connor McDavid. I, I think everybody should be excited about what's happening right here because. It's not too often that you get a player that's in the middle of the season to jump on a show 
and do a podcast like this. And it shows you how great of a guy Evander Kane is uh, to be able to take some time off of his schedule and jump on with us. It's, um, I'm hoping um, I'm hoping we, we ask him the right questions. That's what I'm hoping. Huh? Bring him on, buddy. Huh? Let's bring him on. Well, he's in the queue. Uh, maybe he's got to turn his uh, his camera on, or I don't know if it, he's he's in the queue waiting. Hopefully, he can he can find the find the queue to jump. There he is. There. Yeah. Look at the stud. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that stud. Is anybody, like, I What's know going on, guys? I know, I know you're a great hockey player, but do many people say like you're one of the most beautiful like men in the world, like like pretty <laughs> men in the world? I I don't hear that uh, too often from the the hockey world. That's for sure. Okay, well, you heard it from this hockey world, so that's <laughs> <laughs> well. Welcome, <laughs> hey, welcome to the show. Welcome to the show, Vander. We're so so excited to have you. Uh, there's so many people out there that are that are big fans of yours and. And obviously, you know, you bring so much to the game, so much to your team, and, and your career has been, has been, it's been up, it's been down, it's been strong, it's been great. It's kind of, kind of resembles my own career, and I, I have a, such a high admiration for you, and I'm really excited uh, that you're on here. So I appreciate you being on with us. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I looked at the schedule, and, and we always film on Wednesdays, and I go, Tuesday, Thursday, they're at home. Maybe he'll do this for us. But, like, before he came on the show, JR said, he goes, it's not too often we get a player that's actively, you know, you guys are busy, man. You And, you know, you're at home tonight. you got three kids running around probably right now, like, wondering where daddy is. So we really appreciate it. Let's get right to the – let's get – I'm glad we got you on now instead of like a month ago when 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 it, it seemed like it was a dumpster fire in Edmonton. You guys have won eight games in a row. That – as JR, you know, you played in this league. It's tough to win eight games in a row. You look at, at uh, San Jose, they beat Winnipeg, I think, last night. You, it doesn't matter who you're playing in this league. You, can, you cannot take any win, uh, any game – for granted, how have you guys strung eight wins together, buddy? Yeah, I mean, I think we we obviously dug ourselves a, a massive hole early in the season. Um, I think part of kind of digging ourselves with the hole, realizing that you know if we let this continue, we're going to be out of the playoffs uh, before Christmas. Um, and obviously, nobody signed up uh, this season for for that to transpire. So. Um, I think our backs were against the wall. We, we dug deep. We realized we needed to play a certain way to have some success and, and really win some hockey games. And, um, you know, we, we've won eight in a row ever since Washington. I actually, I'll give you guys a little bit of a story here. Um, going into that game against Washington, I, I told the boys, I said, if we win five in a row, on that sixth game in warm-up, I'll rock double Rolexes in warm up <laughs> and uh and awesome. i you know i said it is i said it in a way like you know just to you know give the boys something to try to motivate yeah, you know get, get the boys going and you know I, I thought you know i said yeah i'll do it for sure and we ended up winning five games in a row and then we won that fifth game and after the game the boys were not letting me off the hook so uh it was of course actually, not. i forget who we played and uh, there's some video footage i think you'll be seeing it probably come out pretty shortly but uh i had our uh team trainer um brad harrison cut off like half, half of my old gloves so you could see the wrist <laughs> and warm up and <laughs> i was rocking double rollies and the darnell nurse put on a song that uh, uh that really 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 song when we came out for warm up so it was uh it was pretty fun but uh <laughs> the boys loved it and i think if we get to 20 wins in a row you're gonna see Connor mcdavid and uh Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Zach Hyman rocking a double rollies too. Well, they should. And I, I listen, if, if you're going to win 20 games, I think your whole team will rock double rollies. That's what <laughs> yeah. But isn't that what the game is about, right? Having that camaraderie, having that thing that we can all kind of rally around and, and be all a part of a team. Like you did that. And that's kind of a lost art in the game today. We used to have these things back in the day and, and you played – uh, you played for a long time, so you kind of know how that team chemistry works by doing little things like that. Um, do you see that still very often, or did you do that because you just wanted to just do something to bring the team together? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, it wasn't um, – uh, personally, I like to do little things like that. I think, you know, especially when 
the season was not going how we wanted. You want to try to keep the room light, um, you know, especially going into going into uh, the start of a new game. Um, you know, you can really only focus on that next game. Um, I think uh, team camaraderie and having fun uh, in the locker room is really important. Very. I think um, having fun on the plane is really important, you know, on the road. Um, so those are things that, uh, you know, I kind of saw when I first got in the league. Um, it was kind of trending out of that old school kind of, you know, early 2000s, late 90s. I you are old school, my friend. Tail end of you, know, that era. you are old school. You are old school, my friend. You know that, right? You have that old school in you for <laughs> sure. You would have been perfect in your yeah. era. So, so you, you know, you said something. You said something interesting, you, which I kind of want you to go back. Like, so you build that camaraderie. Obviously, starting the season, a lot, a lot of people, including myself, thought gave you guys probably one of the top, um, probably prospects for winning the Stanley Cup, and then the season started. What what happened in the beginning of the season, and, and what was the change? And, and I know you guys had a coaching change. What was the atmosphere, the attitude in the locker room? It couldn't have been, it couldn't have been nice. It couldn't have been pleasant. And who were the guys that kind of kept kept that energy going? Changing a coach is really difficult. Was it that, or was what what changed from the beginning till now? Well, I think. Um... Obviously, you know, we had high expectations for ourselves as a group um, going into the season. I think we put, I think maybe we just didn't handle the pressure as a, as a team. We probably should have. I think we we put a lot of emphasis on having such a great start and we had the complete opposite. Um, we had the worst start you could possibly have. Um, you know, anytime a coach gets fired with a team that uh, has aspirations of winning a Stanley Cup, less than 20 games in, um, it's embarrassing uh, as players and for us as a group. And, um, you know, Woody's a guy that uh, obviously came in a few years ago, uh, did a great job with our group. Uh, he, he didn't lose the room. I know that was a narrative that maybe people were trying to say, but he did. Um, but management thought it would be best to make a change. And usually when those things happen, you can respond one of two ways. Um, you know, you can rather mail it in or you can uh, – push forward and, and, and prove, uh, prove the type of team that you really are. That's uh, the route we decided to choose. You know what? Uh, I, I like the word that you, I'd never heard that before, to be honest with you, a player saying that they were embarrassed. I, you know, Craig Berube, as you know, just got fired here in St. Louis, a good friend of mine. I, I'm pissed off today because I know what a good person Craig is and it's not his fault. And to hear you say that it's embarrassing. I didn't understand JR, you went through coaching changes uh is it really like that where you're like it, 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 it even though you're not winning you still go you know what i i let this guy down is that how you guys feel because i've not, i haven't heard that before jr are you asking me oh i thought you were talking to talking to banner i hey listen I think that's the responsible way to react is to be embarrassed that you didn't pull the job and do the do the things that your coach outlines, whether it's uh, an a identity or it's a system. And you know, Jay Woodcroft is a good person, and and I think Kane or you'd agree with me. Jay Woodcroft is a good person, a smart person. And look, last year everything was rolling along just fine, and I actually love Kaner that you said that you guys were embarrassed and that kind of you know lit a fire under your asses and how you guys responded is really ad is you got you got to be commended for how you guys have responded for sure um you know what there's there's uh something that i want to bring up kaner and jr you, you you're not aware of this but evander and i didn't really like each other early in our career and he was young and cocky and i was old and cocky and uh <laughs> And we had a play one one day, and it Tampa. was one of the worst refs in the league. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, somebody said it. Finally, somebody said it. <laughs> I, my first couple of years, I hated Tim. I hated him. <laughs> <laughs> tell me why, please. Tell me why. I got to hear why. Well, I just he was all he would always call penalties on me. I mean, nobody likes that. And then. It was, it was, and I think this is where you're going with this, Tim. Yeah. But let me know if I'm wrong. So we're in Tampa Bay. 
And I am, I'm on, we've already moved to Winnipeg. Yeah. From Atlanta. So I'm in Winnipeg and I'm battling for a puck in the corner. Okay. In the offensive zone. And I get knocked down from behind and I go to reach for the puck. Okay. In the corner and Tim, Timmy's sitting in the corner, just standing there. Right. And he suddenly just collects the puck with his foot and pushes it away from my stick <laughs> during the play. <laughs> and, and I look up at him like, "Is you've got to be kidding me. Like, this is insane. <laughs> and obviously that didn't make me like Timmy any more than I already had, right? So, um, but then we run into each other. I, hey. yeah. I don't know why I did that. I don't know why I did that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you just weren't a very good skater. I don't know what it was, but <laughs> yeah, it probably you kicked the puck away from me. So it's funny though, and we've all experienced this where where your perception of somebody is X, but you it's because you see them on TV and you don't really know them. And then so my wife and I are in and and JR, you love the cove in the Bahamas and NASA. And my wife with it and I are there at the cove and I'm on the beach and hanging out with Tisha and I'm like, you know what? I think I'm going to go check out the pool and, you know, see if there's any hotties over there or whatever. And I go over to the pool and there was a hottie. It was, a, it was uh 91 and he's in the pool and he's got the champagne and a, and a cigar going. And I'm like, I want to hang out with this guy. And he sees me and he's like, peels me, come on. And we hung out the rest of the day, went out to dinner that night. And it's funny, all it takes is a, a simple interaction where it's a player and a ref. And then when you see each other away from the game, you realize, yeah, we're just, we're, we're all pretty good people. And we're all kind of, we're going to battle and so on. And that's kind of where, when we hit it off. And, and uh, I've, I've, you know, I love, I love your style. I love how you play. And I want you to talk about, did you saw the PK Subban video the other day? Did you see, happen to see the, that? The short clip? Yeah. Yeah. A short clip about him yeah. saying that he wasn't really able to, um, celebrate you know he was told when he played for team canada you can't celebrate like you do for the montreal canadians and you're you're a very colorful person jr is myself and and sometimes that brings attention to to our uh, you know to us did you ever because you're out there man you were out there when you were in atlanta and winnipeg and buffalo did you ever feel like i just want to be my, this is who i am man i just want to be myself like, and I'm sorry that I don't fit this this NHL mode or or whatever, which I think is bullshit. You should be able to be yourself. And the, the league needs more colorful people in the league and guys that want to be express themselves. Did you ever feel like you were held back because of that? Oh, 100 percent. I think um, a big part of uh, whatever people thought my reputation was, uh, specifically going back to you know, when we left Atlanta and, and moved to Winnipeg, um, I think that was a big part of it, whether it was me getting my hair cut a different way um, or whether it was, you know, I was listening to a, or I saw a clip, I wasn't listening, I saw a clip um, of a podcast of one of my ex-teammates and they asked him about me, you know, how was he, a young Evander? Um, and he was saying, oh, he was always, you know, wearing nice clothes and, you know, buying bags for whoever, you know, girlfriends or whatever he was with and, uh, you know, rub some of us the wrong way. I'm thinking, and it just, it just, it just kind of validates my points. Like, I don't understand why people cared about what I do in my own personal time. You know, the only thing I'm looking for out of a teammate is one, to be a good teammate who treats you with respect when you're at the rink and somebody who helps you win on the ice. Other than that, I really don't care what you do in your own personal time or how you, live your life that's uh you know that's on your own time so um for me you know whether it was uh kind of trying to bring a little bit more flair and poise and pizzazz and entertainment to the side of hockey um, right. that i know guys like jr you know love to bring um that was always frowned upon especially being in the city in canada that had just gotten hockey back for the first time in a long time um yeah and i think that's where you know people look at that as being selfish you know me wanting to have my own brand back in 2011 you know today that's celebrated in every other sport that's celebrated 
you're look, you know, that's that's being a, a smart business person, right? Is can using your brand to help build your net worth, whether that's financially, whether that's um, right. you know your celebrity status, whatever it may be. I think those things are important. I think that's why hockey is so far behind is because we don't have nearly enough of that. And we we also don't have as many guys that are willing to do those type of things. Um, And then when you take guys like myself that do enjoy that side of the game and you kind of shit on them for thinking that way or wanting to do different things outside of the normal hockey thing or the normal hockey way, you know, it, it does get discouraging at sometimes. You know, well, I couldn't. Have, I could. I couldn't have said it better. I know. Um, I um, I one million. I don't even think there's a an amount of number that I can agree with you more because the National Hockey League handcuffs people and handcuffs their players to be cookie cutter players, personally, personality wise. To have somebody like you in the game is such a refreshing mentality. I was like that, and I'm still. You know, I'm still ridiculed and, and, and shunned from the National Hockey League in certain things because of my honesty and my personality. And it's actually, the National Hockey League is getting hurt by a lack of personality. And you, I don't care what anybody says, they are. But your personality is very important to you. And I totally agree. Be yourself. Because don't you believe that the way you are and the way that you see yourself and the, and the branding and the personality, it, it, it goes onto the ice. Because you play with severe attitude and with severe confidence and personality, they don't, don't you think, Evander, that they, that they they have a connection between the two? Don't you think? One hundred percent. You know, you gotta, you have to be yourself. Um, for me, I, I I play with an attitude um, on the ice. I I think that's when I'm playing my best. Um, I think you know, there's been lots of people that. You know, have come up to me and said they enjoy watching me play, not because I have a skill set like Davo, <laughs> but because you know I'm entertaining, right? Yep. And and I think that that is important. Um, I think that's not you know that's not the obviously the only element of your game or what you want your game to be, but to have that, um, I don't know if there's a ton of players that have that or definitely don't showcase it. You know, you can kind of go around the league a little bit and you think of guys like maybe a Brad Marchand, um, you know, Ovi obviously has a big personality, um, you know, PK when, when he was playing and, and you see what he's doing now. Um, so yeah, by the way, kind PK, of PK, P- I think PK would, by the way, I think PK would still be playing if the league probably didn't look down on the way PK was. I don't think PK should have retired. I think he still has a lot in the can, but I think, I mean, this is just my personal opinion. Um, I think, I think some some I think he got a little bit the raw deal from the league because of his personality, and he should still be playing. That's just my my opinion. I love watching him. I love PK, but um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. But um, we talked about it. But I just think you're 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 dead on, man. You're you're bang on with your assessment of a personality. But so, how do you look at yourself? Because you kind of bring so many different elements. So. Tell, tell us who Evander Kane is on the ice. Are you the goal scorer? Because you have a tremendous goal scoring knack. You're, you can fight. You're an antagonist. You kind of do everything. So what's, what's Evander Kane's strength? What, what do you, like when you're on the ice, what's, what is your best quality and what you bring to a team? Well, I, I think um, I'm never going to sell myself short. I think uh, you shouldn't being able to put the puck in, being being able to put the puck in the net is my best quality. I mean, I I think I can score in different ways. I, I've, I've proven that over a, a long period of time, um, and and scoring consistently, I think, is is what kind of separates you know uh, average goal scorers from 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 really good goal scorers. Um, but I think at the same time, you know, as a player, uh, my goal going into every game is to try to bring something positive to the team uh, to help us win on the ice. Um, I haven't scored every single game I've played, so you have to be able to do other things. Mm-hmm. And for me, that can be finishing checks. That could be getting in somebody's face. That could be providing some intimidation. Um, that you like that part, fight. too. That can be, you like that part. You yeah. like that part, too. You love it. I love that you love yeah, that part. I, I mean, I, I, think it, I think it's a very important factor to have on a serious 
you know, team who wants to win. Um, I think it can play a role in a series. Um, mm -hmm. I've been a part of series uh, in the past where it has played a significant role. Um, and, you know, especially with the way the league's going, there's, there's a lot less of that. Um, you know, there's, there's very few guys in the league that can really play, um, but also from a physical standpoint, um, can be intimidating. Um, and I think, you know, a little bit of unpredictability can go yeah. a long way and it could point on their toes. Dying breed. So, uh, you're a dying breed. I think having a little bit of that in your game as well can be helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm not going to score every night. I'm not going to put up 150 points a year, but I try to do different things, uh, each and every night, uh, and multiple things if I, if I can to, you know, what you do, you know what you do, you know what you do do every night. And then I'll let Tim ask in this next question. You know what you do every night? You're noticed. You're noticed every night for some reason. And that's that's a real cool quality. No, <laughs> seriously, it's it's a real cool yeah, quality. Good, bad, or ugly. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. By the way, yeah, you, you know you care because you do something that everybody notices every game, and you can't say that about a lot of players in the game. That I think that's an amazing quality to have and, and a good attribute. So I, I think that's great. You know, it's it's uh, you guys are talking about your physicality and so on. And I was at the Blues uh, Red Wings team last night. And I think I saw four checks for the entire game, and I think Braden Chen threw all four of them for the Blues. Like <laughs> this game is becoming like a skills competition now, and it, it bugs me. It, I, I love our game. I, hockey's the best sport, but it's bugging me that we're losing that physicality. You were taking heat last week for a hit on Jonas Brodin from Minnesota, and uh, from behind, and I'm like, that's not. Yeah, he's finishing his check, but guess what, Brodin. You, you need to learn how to defend yourself, first of all. These guys don't defend themselves anymore, Keener. I, I can't believe it. You know, you and I have talked off camera about, about you know, I told you I'm a big Dana White fan and, and what he, what he speaks about. And he goes, if you're a savage and, I, and you're a savage in hockey, you can dominate. And, you know, you got 12 goals this year, probably going to score 35 to 40 goals. And I love it. And, and you you mentioned about getting under under player's skin. Tell me about Ryan Hartman the other night because I think he's a little grease ball. I don't like the guy, and I'm sorry, but to Minnesota fans, but I don't like him. I think he's dirty, slew puts people and so on. And you, I think he took a minor penalty against you because you got under his skin, right? Well, yeah, I, I think he was probably just trying to uh, stick up for uh, his teammate who he hit, which. I have no problem with, um, you know, I actually asked him if he wanted to go, um, didn't seem interested, but then, uh, decided to throw a punch and, and sucker me a little bit. And, um, I know I said the other day too, that, uh, I thought he purposely dragged his feet over my face and, you know, I stand by those comments for sure. Um, you know, I was there, I felt that it's impossible to prove, but, um, you know, I've been in, unfortunately in that situation before last year, um, and uh, I know there's some history there, but uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, hockey's a really fast game. Um, hits are going to be made. You know, you, you talk about, you know, the one thing about hitting um, that I think is important is like, you know, I learned how to hit when I was and take a hit when I was, you know, 11 years old. Yeah. Um, and I know, and I'm not too familiar with minor hockey these days, but I know they're kind of pushing that back mm -hmm. to like, 14, 15, and, and I understand why, you know, but at the same time, it can have an adverse effect where, you know, you have kids that are entering junior hockey that have had one year of hitting under their belt. Um, you know, that can be a dangerous thing. And um, I think, you know, knowing, you know, the one thing my dad always told me when I first stepped on the ice, is even as a kid, is you got to protect yourself at all times. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, whether that's, getting in a hit that's whether that's getting in the scrum um you know guys are ruthless out there um you know and it's it's either you or them uh, at mm -hmm. the end of the day um especially when you get in those scrums i know you've been in lots jr oh, yeah. and you know guys are trying to they're not trying to hurt other guys but they're not they're definitely not trying to help you <laughs> no but you know it's just as just as important as learning how to hit is learning how to get hit learning how to put yourself in, in the best position when you know you're going to get hit I don't know if you guys saw the game uh, a couple weeks ago where um, 
uh, the, one of the Hughes brothers in Jersey, the defenseman, was going into the corner. And he kind of, instead of going into the corner and picking the puck up and knowing that he's going to have to absorb the hit in the shoulders, he actually turned his left shoulder back towards the boards, literally turned his head towards the boards. So now when he gets hit, what does it look like? He looks like he's getting hit from behind and he gets absolutely demoralized instead of going, absorbing the hit, knowing that you're going to get hit. Don't try to get away from it. Absorb it. These kids today don't know how to take hits and absorb hits, which makes the hit look even worse because they put themselves in, in vulnerable positions. It's a great point by you. And you talked about the speed of the game. I, I This was not, I couldn't not ask about what it's like being on the same team as who I think is the greatest, most talented hockey player I've ever seen in Connor McDavid. What is it like being on a, on a team watching this guy day in, day out, how he plays, how he performs, what he's like in the locker room, how he, how he is in practice. Cause we see how he is in games. I don't, I don't think I can ever see, say I saw anything that performs like this guy. Yeah, I mean, I would I would echo those same sentiments. Um, I don't think anybody has, has seen a player uh, with those individual skills all in one package um, at the speed um, and the quickness he plays with. I mean, you know, everybody was talking about how he would start off um, in a bit of a slump for his standards, you know, and he's still over a point a game player. And then, you know, the last eight to ten games, he's um, – he just he's just on another level uh, and it's really hard to understand how somebody can be that good uh, at what you do as a professional and how much better they are at it um, do you guys so, look at each other in the I mean, locker room do you guys what, look at each other he's the playing ice, the way he's playing do you guys yeah, look at like, each other and go like what the fuck? right you know you know what like in a, I've, I mean, I've I've been here now for three years at Edmonton and like it's getting to the point where like you know, you, you're, you're in awe, but it's, it's kind of to be expected. And like, you know, you've seen this before, right? Well, like, the other night, he, actually that Minnesota game, he scored that Minnesota game. He scored that amazing goal. I think we're in like coast to coast, and walked the D man, kept coming and went behind the net and then tucked it in on the short side. And it's just like, you know, what an incredible individual effort, but like, you know, that's a, kind of a standard goal for him. It's <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> Yeah, right. yeah, it was like the night when he came out of the penalty box. You go, oh, this, 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 and he got the break where you're like, this is a goal. Like, you, you just knew as soon as he came out of the box, he grabbed it. You're like, okay, we're scoring a goal here. Hey, you talked about, uh, we were talking about um, injuries and so on. I, I did want to touch on, because Patty Maroon's way here in St. Louis, and your incident in Tampa a couple of years ago, was it last year or the year before? It was the year before, right? When you got, had your last wrist, year, no, it was last year. When you had your wrist cut, and it's burned in my memory. I can remember your face as you're skating off the ice. It gives me chills right now. You were scared shitless. How did you know I'm? I, I, I got a serious problem here. Like this is not good. Oh yeah, yeah, I knew right away. Um, and yeah, like, you know, I just even thinking, listening to you a little bit and thinking about that again, like, yeah, like I was genuinely scared because like I saw what was, I saw my arm and, you know, I saw the blood kind of squirt out right away and um, I knew it wasn't good and I needed help immediately. So um, just very thankful that uh, can you tell me what, the doctor said. Can you tell me what Patty Maroon said to you next time you saw it? Because I, I remember him coming up to you. Um, yeah, he, it was, it was, I don't know. It was a little strange actually. He said, I, he said, uh, I think he, he kind of said like, he didn't, uh, he didn't realize what happened or didn't, didn't know what happened immediately or whatnot. But, uh, yeah, he texted me though, um, a few days later or, or the next day after I had surgery, uh, and, and just wanted to make sure I was all right. So I did appreciate that. Pretty cool, Jer. Yeah, it, 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 it is cool. And, you know, obviously, NHL guys are the best camaraderie. Nobody wants to hurt one, you know, one to the other. Um, so my last question to you, because I think this is an important one. Um, you know, I, I told you early in the show, I, I see a lot of a lot of your career and what has happened 
you know, through your entire career, ups, downs, you know, your, your highs, your lows, I had the same things and I've had to learn a lot of things of a lot of the mistakes that I made. Um, how, how was Evander Kane in his head and how has, has what you've gone through in your career? Because it seems like right now you're in a really good place and you're playing great hockey and you're on a, on a great team. And, but how is, how is as the steps that, that you have taken and the things that you have had to go through, um, not only in the professional life of hockey, but in the personal life of Evander Kane. Um, it seems like you've you've really, really come to a good place where you are right now. Am I right? Yeah, I, I would I would have to agree. I mean, I feel good. Um, life's good. Uh, no uh, no complaints. Pretty stress free. You know, I got uh, three kids that uh, keep me incredibly busy. Um, that. Uh, that make it fun to come home to, even if you have a tough game. Um, so that's always that's always a positive. But yeah, I mean, I, I've obviously had um, I've had a lot of great moments. I've had some tough moments, uh, you know, both professionally and personally. Um, things that uh, that have happened that are embarrassing or um, tough to deal with, um, specifically when things aren't true, um, and it and it. It's it, it hasn't been easy, but you know, for me, it's something that uh, it's made me a lot stronger. Um, I think if you if you go through life without any adversity, you have to really learn and grow. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the biggest things that's that's that I've been lucky enough to to be able to do is is learn and grow from from these things. And um, some of it is self inflicted, some of it isn't. Um, and just being able to you know, decipher, uh, what is in, what you don't have control over. Um, and just having a strong mindset, be mentally tough. I mean, there was a point in time where I don't think anybody thought I was going to be playing in the NHL again. Um, and my personal belief, uh, never wavered one bit. Um, I knew the type of player I was, I knew the type of person I was. And, uh, for me, I, I know, I knew that I just needed an opportunity to showcase that. And, um, you know, I was very happy that uh, Kenny Holland and the Oilers and Mr. Cates, uh, you know, gave me an opportunity to do that and um, just trying to reward them with uh, good play on the ice. And uh, you are. you're killing it. Happy to be in Edmonton. You are. You're killing yeah. it. I'm proud of you for that, man. I'm proud of you for that. Really. Yeah. It's yeah. awesome. I'm proud of it. And, and you know what, though, buddy? It's, it, JR's been through shit. I've been through shit. And I, I look at my kids and, you know. What shit have you been through, Tim? I thought, I thought you were tired because you wanted to do a podcast. I I think I'm the only one out of the three of us that was made people magazine, okay? And it wasn't good. Let me just leave it at that. Okay? <laughs> Tim's kids tell me he's an awful coach. They don't let him touch the box. <laughs> but you know what? It it's such. It, I love. I first of all, we love you, and thanks for coming on. We're going to talk about your journey work here in a second because I love what you're doing in Edmonton. I think you got something coming up this Friday, but you know what? You gotta be yourself. And at the end of the day, I I, I told my buddies the other day, Kaner, I said I am shortening my bench of friends. It's getting shorter and shorter and shorter because the only people that matter to me right now are my family and a very close group of friends and everybody else can kiss my ass because I really don't give a shit what everyone else thinks. And social media is the sewer of that right now where they go, listen, you've got custody of your daughter from, from some you know previous engagement. Not too often a guy gets full custody. There's been so many things that's been said about you that is untrue, and that, but people just spew it out there. I was accused of rigging hockey games. That you were accused of game, like it's you not, did rig a hockey game. You kicked the puck away from the Vander for Christ's sake. It's unbelievable. <laughs> it's, it's unbelievable what people want to say. But you know what? I love that you're yourself. Keep yeah. doing it. Keep telling it. I know you're going to get 35, 40 goals this year. I really want to compliment you on the charity work you're doing in Edmonton. Tell us a little bit about that. I think you've got something coming up this week. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, I'm obviously uh, when I got to Edmonton um, and really every city I've ever played in, uh, um, getting in touch with the community has always been something that uh, 
I've always done and, and been a part of and, and, and wanted to do. And um, coming to a city where hockey's so important, um, you know, I wanted to make sure I, I had an impact on on the community. And uh, um, last year with my injury, I, I had some time, obviously, uh, some free time uh, to do a few more things um, and decided to kind of start uh, a charity Christmas shopping spree um, that, I, that I've done here in Edmonton uh, last year. And um, we're doing it again uh, this Friday night and we're doubling the amount of kids that we did last year. So I think we have about 200 kids coming out and um, awesome. something I'm really looking forward to just because of how great it was last year. Um, you know, I wanted to make sure that I did it again and um, just to kind of give kids uh, something to look forward to on Christmas when maybe they wouldn't have had that opportunity otherwise. So, um, you know, it's a special time of year and uh, it, it just, it makes me feel good. Uh, it makes the people that um, help me put this event on feel good. And, and obviously, uh, number one, it makes the children feel good. So happy I to do it. I love it. I love it. It's perfect, perfect way to end an awesome, awesome interview. And again, you know, Vander, thanks for taking the time out. I, I know what it's like when you're playing. Um, middle of the season you like to have these off days to just kind of relax but i know tim and i really appreciate you being on man it means a lot and it means a lot to the people that are watching seriously you you know what you just said what you're doing means a lot to a lot of the kids and you have a lot of fans out there and you deserve it man i, I I'm can't a, i'm a fan i'm a big fan too i can't believe that your wife has kept the three kids as quiet the whole time this is unbelievable well we we got we got a we got a christmas holiday party tonight so she's getting ready and the kids are downstairs eating they said, make sure the kids, I'm in my son's room right now. Like, I had nowhere to go in the house. <laughs> but I knew it was going to be quiet. So. Hey, well, <laughs> have a few cocktails tonight. We love you, buddy. I love you. Uh, uh, I'm rooting for you guys this year. I know you're going to make the playoffs. You guys are going to go on a great run. And uh, keep it going, man. Thanks for coming. Around, well, I have to say last, I picked you guys to be in the final. So let's get going. Keep it going. Okay, let's keep it going. I appreciate it, guys. All right. See you, Vander. Take care. Okay, Thanks, you're the best. Thanks, Thanks, buddy. See you later. See ya. Okay. Bye now. He's the best, buddy. Isn't he just a tremendous guy? Like, seriously, he's he's so good. Um, Look at that smile. I know. Yeah. You know. I think what you said was really important. You know, I don't know if he's if, you, if he's going to click off if he's going to click off here. Um, but he is. He, he is so. He has so much personality, and his, you know, his, his, his competitiveness is is one one of the highest in the league, and and not, I'll say that about anybody. His competitive nature, because he was, he was talking about how he wants to do something, even if it's not scoring, it's punching somebody in the face, it's yelling at somebody, it's you know, making a back check, doing something that is that is important to the game, and you know, you got. When I say when I say he's noticed every game, he's noticed every game for doing something, and that's that's a special quality. I, I didn't want to bring this up, this story up when, when he was on there because I didn't want to make him feel uncomfortable. But I want the listeners to know because it is important that shit gets said about you, shit gets said about me, shit gets said about Vander King. And let me just tell you this: when he was deciding where he was going to sign. Uh, three years ago, he was letting me know. He was texting me, hey, I'm going to go to Edmonton, blah, blah, blah. We're talking on the phone one day, and I hear this little girl in the background. Now, this is when him and his wife had split up, right? Mm -hmm. And I go, oh, you got your daughter, you know, for the day or the weekend, whatever. And he goes, no, Pilsy. He goes, I, I've got full custody of her. I go, wow. I go, you what? You have full custody of her. He goes doesn't no. happen too often with the with the with the male version well, of that, right? Think about this. You know what he said to me? Verbatim. He goes, think about this, Pielsey. A black man living in California has full custody over on his daughter. And I go, good point. That's unbelievable. So yeah. people want to perceive. People want to listen to all this. Full, do you think the courts awarded him full custody because of the person? All these out. No, yeah. he's a good person. Yeah, it's a good person. It's it's he's a great person. I love it. I love that he came on. Hey, you know, every hey, listen, PLC, Everybody has their their quirks. Everybody, everybody, you know, every everybody's going to be judged. Everybody's going to have their, their the things that people like and people don't like. Which you know what makes him makes him an interesting person. You know, 
people have opinions because he is like that. And that's, you know, that's, I think that's something to, to you know, to tip your cap to. And now I, I want to hear the story now. Now that he's not here, why'd you kick the fuck away from him? I don't, re- I don't know. I don't know. I- <laughs> you cheater. Yeah, yeah. You're rigging hockey games. Yeah, hockey games. Once again, I got caught again, you know. So, but you know what I wanted to ask him, JR, and I, I didn't want to bore our listeners. I kind of wanted it more for a selfish reason for my son Bronson was he is a tremendous skater. Oh, he can skate. He can fly. Oh, my God. He's an unbelievable skater. And I wanted to ask him, I, I looked it up. He start, started playing hockey when he was three years old. I wonder how he learned. Did he take power skating? Did he take figure skating? Like, did you do any of that when you played? Yeah, like, I was a big. I was a big power skating guy. I went to power skating schools. Like those, those are the most schools I went to. Like my dad didn't was more skating, less puck, because he said the puck doesn't matter if you can't get to it. Hundred percent, right? Right. So you got to become a good skater. You got to go to power skating schools. You got to learn the, the 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 real way to skate. The power moves. The power strides the position, you know, it's really important because once you learn how to skate, if you learn the wrong way, it's really hard to change the the the, the body and how it learns to do something. Oh so God. learn it, learn right. it properly the first time. And all you parents out there that have young kids, put them in power skating schools so they learn how to skate the proper way the first time and not have to try to redo it later in, in life. 100%, it's all muscle memory, right? It's sure. Like- like it's a technique it's a technique it's like a golf swing if you try to change your golf swing it's tough to do that because the muscle memory always brings you back to your to your original swing. yeah so listen we got about 10 minutes left I, I and i want to get to this one segment because i think it's really important uh we've had a couple of suspensions in the league uh Gubranson got suspended for a game for attacking cousins and we had uh peron suspended six games for a cross check to the head in in st louis um this is uh this is kind of interesting i'd love to hear your take on both of the suspensions because there's a lot of talk going on about david prawn getting six games for a cross check to the head when he has zero prior infractions in the national hockey league that is a massive suspension for a guy who has never been in the situation before Hundred percent, and, and guess what? Zub, the guy, the the player that he cross checked, Zub, Zub, whatever his name is from Ottawa, the defenseman, came back and played the next shift. Okay, so how really, Jr. How severe was the cross check? You've been cross checked. You know when it hurts, and you've taken a period off or a shift off or missed a game because the guy came back the next shift, and you're suspending him for six games. Well, that's part of the game. That's part of the suspension process. Is what what was the injury that was inflicted? Did the other player miss games? That's that's usually what goes into the thought process mm-hmm. in the National Hockey League disciplinary program that they say, okay, what what was the result of the play? The result of the play, you just said the guy came back and played. So why six games? It seems there's something else behind it that I don't know what it is. And we've seen now, this is like the third or fourth time this year that we have seen cross checks to the head now of course i think if we go ask david perron david perron's going to say i didn't mean to cross check him in the face i meant to cross check him in the shoulder it happened with it happened with uh with chandler stevenson in vegas where he literally cross checked the guy in the shoulder and it, it kind of came it kind of came up the guy fell and he hit his head on the net yeah he hit his head on the goal and he's holding his face like he got cross-checked by Chandler Stevenson and he got thrown out of the game. So there's something happening, but six games for David Perron. Do you believe that he should have got one or two? I think I think three would be reasonable. So this I can tell you right now why player safety, why they felt it was necessary to give him six games. And I don't I'm not saying I agree with it, but I'm just giving you because being you know, being involved and so on. They gave him six games because he, if Austin Matthews cross-checked the lean uh, last year in front of the net, boom, he retaliated. He didn't like how he was getting manhandled in front, boom, cross-checks him in the head. I think he got two games for that. The reason they gave him six was the whistle blows, Iran makes a beeline to the guy. It's not 
it, you know, it's premeditated. It's not in the heat of the action. I'm not battling with you. It's you had time to think about it. You took it. You took the law into your own hands. I don't have a problem with player safety with that rationale. But I think a guy that has played 1,100 games in the NHL and has never been suspended once should get a little leeway. And maybe- well, they threw the they, they threw that mentality out the window. Yeah, they did. They they, they threw that that aspect of evaluating a a, a a suspensionable a suspendable play out of the equation. That was a, because they they can't use that anymore because they just threw it out. That was a hundred and forty eight thousand dollar cross check. That's what it got. Well, listen, you know, David Perron knows better, and and we like we like what he was thinking. He's coming to the aid of Larkin, who's laying there on the on the well, ice, I, like like I, he got I, shot, like he got shot. Um, you know, I don't know what happened to him, but. I saw the play. I mean, I've I've seen guys get hit a million times harder than Larkin got hit in that situation. And I love I love Dylan Larkin. He's one of my f- favorite players. But I do think that he was embellishing a little bit. I'm, I don't care. I don't mind saying that it was an embellishment a little bit. Um, but the fact that he was he sticking up bombs and that too, Jer. So uh, you know, in fairness to him. But you know what? And sorry to interrupt, but I'm going to. Is I love Perron. <laughs> I love Perron for what he did, though. Yeah, I do too. Evander Kane would have done the same thing. We, where where Austin Matthews or some of these other guys that that just don't have any balls these days would stand over in the corner. He's like you said, he's standing up for his teammate. I'm all for that. Yeah. I, I, I love it. I, I hey, listen, I'm a I, I, you know David Perron. I, I've I've spoken with him. I, I really feel like we we have a respect for each other. I lo- I like the way he plays. I think he's an underrated player. He's a great goal scorer. You don't see this type of mentality that David Perron. So when you do see it, you have to you you have to celebrate it that he's sticking up and he's coming back and doing something for his own teammate. And he, was it the wrong situation, the wrong timing? He got caught with a stick. Yeah, he deserved to get suspended. But sure. he didn't deserve to get suspended for six games. Now, under Gubranson, he got suspended for a game. Now, does he deserve to get suspended? Well, I guess he deserves to get suspended for what his actions are. But thank goodness the league only gave him one. So let's let's kind of, let's kind of break down the whole situation. So Gubranson, earlier in the game, gets hit from behind from My from cousin. Cousins. This correct. I should have been five in a game. 100%. Should have been five in a game. Another hit from behind. We talked about this with Evander Kane, uh, about hit from behind, about doing the right thing. This was a very, very dangerous hit by Cousins on Gabranson. He should have got five in a game and been tossed, but he didn't. The referees missed it again. No, they didn't. Listen, I'm telling you. You don't I, think that they, you don't think Cousins should have got five in a game and been, been bounced? 100%, but you're That's wrong. That's what I just said. The referees missed it. No, they didn't. Listen to me. You got to get off your whiskey in the wild, okay? I'm telling you right now. The referees called Cousins. They gave him a five and a game. This is the problem with the NHL right now. They gave him a five and a game, but because everything has to be reviewed now by Toronto, they get on the headset with Toronto with the situation room. Toronto looks at the hit. They go, nah, you know what? It's not that bad. We're going to re- let's reduce it to a minor penalty. If I'm the ref there and I'm talking to Chris King or Rod Pazm or Kay Whitmore or Coley Campbell, I'm going, are you are you kidding me? This is a five and a game. This is a blatant five and a game. So now, fast forward, you 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 guys, hockey ops, kept him in the game. You gave him a two-minute minor. So what happens? Your Branson jumps him. Well, guess what would have happened? If Cousins had been thrown out like the referees wanted him to, Branson wouldn't be suspended today because he wouldn't have had an opportunity to jump, to jump Cousins. He would have got him down the road. It was a, it was a, I don't understand. I would like to ask hockey ops, why did you guys not go into agreement or not agree with the referees on this call? And that's the problem sometimes is you got to let the referees make the call. They're the ones on the ice that have a feel for the game. You're sitting in the situation room in Toronto watching it on TV, these guys are living it in person on the ice. Give it to the refs. Let them make the correct call because they did make the correct call. I'm telling you right now, that might have been one of the best 
the best descriptions of what it's like to be on ice as a referee because you just said something that was really important you feel the 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 mentality on the ice you see what's being done you right. see what you see the tempers you hear what the guys are saying and there comes a time where you have to let the referees dictate the game and they didn't the national hockey league did not let the referees dictate the game and you know what happened cousins came down the boards and gubranson who is still fuming in his head because he just almost got his head decapitated and almost got almost got paralyzed from a hit from behind said you know what cousins i'm gonna knock your head in and he went after him and he jumped him and i thought it was i thought it was pretty um it was it was pretty pretty bad that the rep that the nhl suspended gabranson not looking at how the game played or what the circumstances were before because it was a national hockey league and the and the and the you know the camera people or the in toronto guys that let Gabranson down. They, they let Gabranson down. What is, listen, you and I would take Eric Gabranson on our team any day. I and love he's him. a tough. He's a tough. He's a tough player. He's a he's a big, strong defenseman. Not a dirty player. He's played it honest his entire career. He'll fight. He'll do whatever. But at that point, to your, to exactly what you said, Jr. He's like, so you guys aren't going to police this. Well, I guess I got to take it into my own hands. I guess yep. I take care of Cousins. And I don't have one problem with what he did whatsoever. Listen, that – what a way to end the show because you, you just – you just said why this podcast is is one of the one of the best is because we have a player personality that looks at it one way, and we got a referee personality that looks at it another. And I don't think anybody could have explained that situation better than you did, PLZ, to understand the situation, to understand the mentality, this and the the atmosphere that was going on in that ice. And um, those are two suspensions that I think were unwarranted but could have been avoided. And it's, I hope, I, I just hope that the league and, and some of these guys that are in Toronto uh, understand and, and learn from some of these things that are happening because uh, it's going to keep on happening if they don't. Yeah, I agree, buddy. Very well said. It was yeah. a great, great show tonight. Uh, we got a couple more before Christmas. I, I think you've been a good boy all year, so I don't think you're going to get any coal in your Ha! Ah, you think I've been a good boy? <laughs> I got you fooled too. Yeah, I know I've been pretty good. Been pretty busy. Um, we want to thank uh, our sponsors, Whiskey in the Wild, and obviously Bet Online. They have been fantastic. I don't know if you see the games that are happening tomorrow or Saturday, but um, I think it would probably be a good thing right now if you um, we could we could, let's throw out a pick for Saturday. Let some of these guys um, on the podcast here that are watching in our chat room, guys, everybody in the chat room, thank you for being here and. We're reading all it, all of your your chats. We appreciate you joining us live here on NoFilter.net. But I'm gonna go. Um, hey, I'm gonna go with uh, a, a little bit of an upset and probably a, a team that is a little underrated, but is playing pretty well. I'm gonna go with Winnipeg at home over Colorado on Saturday. You get some money. I think you're gonna get some money for your buck on that one. Colorado might be favored a little bit, but. Um, Winnipeg is surprising me this year. They're, they're playing with some gusto and, and doing some good things. So my bet online prediction for Saturday is going to, I'm going to go with Winnipeg against Colorado at home. I like, I like that. And what, uh, Colorado might have a little dissension in their locker room right now after, uh, after Miko Ranton and France, uh, about one of his teammate fathers. Last Wasn't that great? Don't That's you love it? When a, a, a teammate calls out another teammate's dad says, Hey, up, up yours, up, up yours. Right? <laughs> that was great. You know what? That is my only concern, and I'll get to my bet in a second. That's my only concern about Colorado is Gabriel Landeskog is the lead. I ref the, at that team. He is the leader of that team. When he is not there, I love Connor uh, uh, Nathan McKinnon. Love him. He's from the Maritimes where I'm from. I love the kid, but. They don't have any real leader on that team right now. And you got a lot of uh, Indians or Chiefs running the – it's not good. And when you have a player calling out another player's father in a post-game news conference, that's not good. 
it's I, not good. But let's let's they, let's let's call by let, let's 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 call call it like it is. There's no way Lekkonen is going to say anything to Ranton. He's probably going to go up to Ranton and say, "Hey, Miko, I'm really sorry what my dad said. Are we okay? Are we good?" <laughs> this, listen, there is stature, and and Lekkonen is for sure going to be dragging his tail right behind Ranton and saying. Then my dad didn't mean anything by it, right? So, yeah, yeah. Uh, so you kind of went out on the limb, which is good. I like I like your pick. I like Winnipeg a lot. I really like that team a lot. I think they're now Kyle Connor. So I read today, Jr. He's out for six to eight weeks for that knee wow. on knee, that knee on knee hit he took in New York. I didn't like the play. There wasn't even a penalty on the play. Now the guy's out for eight weeks. He's 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 so underrated, and he was, ha- and he was having a career year. And Jr. He's so underrated and doesn't get the recognition because he's playing in Winnipeg. Hundred percent. He's playing in Toronto, New York, Boston. Unbelievable. So I, you went out on the limb. I'm going to go for the lock. The lock is New Jersey in Columbus. Columbus stinks. They're they're just a bad hockey club. And I'm uh, I'm going with Marty Berdur and my New Jersey Devils. And that's your lock of the week. I love it. Well, we'll see. Well, the only the only dud in Columbus is Patrick Lyonet. But anyway, uh, you're the best, buddy. I think you're great. What a great show tonight. Um, thank you to Vander Kane. Thank you to everybody uh, that joined us live here on No Filter for an amazing show. I think every Wednesday at seven o'clock, right here, we have um, we have a very different and interesting take on everything that is NHL. So for Tim Peel and Jeremy Roenick, thanks for joining us for another episode of Snipes and Stripes. We'll see you next week right here, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, 4 p.m. Pacific on nofilter.net. Everybody have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas and holiday season.